Hello, my name is uh, Professor John Shad of the Department of English and Creative Writing here at the University of Lancaster. Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis is, I think, a wonderful novel. Uh, the text that's haunted much of the 20th century and continues to haunt into the 21st century. As I into it, I'm going to pause on just four simple aspects of the text and its context. Firstly, the title of the text. Secondly, the date of the text. Thirdly, Kafka himself. And finally, the opening sentence. Title. In the original German, this is Die Verwandlung, which means the change or transition or even conversion. So not metamorphosis. The word metamorphosis does, of course, mean change, but it's also a word that very obviously takes us back in time to the Roman author Ovid and his famous first century uh, narrative poem, Metamorphoses, which you'll be also studying on world literature. Clearly, there are connections. Ovid's text is a narrative full of bodies that change. But as I say, the German title doesn't necessarily take us back to that classical source. In other words, there is something defiantly modern, I think, about Kafka's exploration of a body that changes. Indeed, there are, I think, some ways in which the text actually looks forward in time, it is, if you will, a futuristic text, a text that does the future. But enough of the title of the text. What of the date of the text? The novel, though written in 1912, is not published until 1915, in other words, until the middle of the First World War, a war in which, of course, so many bodies, particularly male bodies, dramatically change. So is there a way or a sense in which the text anticipates the First World War? Well, we do read at one point that hanging on the wall was a photograph of Gregor from his army days. But uh, enough of dates. What of Kafka himself? Well, firstly, Kafka's illness and then Kafka's Jewishness. Kafka, his illness then, was throughout his life beset by tuberculosis. In 1911, he spent some time in a sanatorium. In 1917, after the novel, he becomes diagnosed with tuberculosis. And in 1924, he will die of it at the age of just 40. So might Gregor's transition be interpreted in terms of illness? And if so, does it also make us see perhaps some of the ways in which modern culture has dealt with illness and dealt with the ill, how the ill may at times have been managed, hidden away, or even brutalized. Kafka's Jewishness. Kafka came from a Jewish family and they lived in the Czech Republic, as we would now call it, in Prague. His family were assimilated Jews, so that their, so their Jewishness or their otherness was largely invisible, visible perhaps even to themselves. But Prague was not without its anti-Semitism, nor of course the early 20th century. Come World War II, three of Kafka's sisters would die in Nazi gas chambers. So, might what happens to Gregor's body be interpreted in terms of what happens to the Jewish body in the 20th century? To end, however, let us go to the beginning, to the novella's opening sentence, which goes like this. When Gregor Samsa awoke, he found himself transformed into a monstrous vermin. So, not as your translation, un, sorry, ungezeifer in the German. So, not as your translation may have it, a dung beetle or an insect. There is clearly something much more indeterminate about the word vermin, which simply means an animal that is of nuisance to humans. In other words, a form of animal life that besets us, plagues us, discomforts us. So, to finish. Does Gregor's transition from office clerk to vermin draw discomforting, discomforting attention to the human-animal distinction? In other words, might 
Gregor's transition be viewed positively. And with this thought, I will end. Crucial here is the line, was Gregor an animal that music could move him so? Was Gregor an animal that music could move him so? This is the moment in the novel when Gregor's sister is playing her violin and he is profoundly moved. Indeed, more moved, it seems, as an animal than ever he was as human or office clerk. So if the text takes us to the very edge or end of what it means to be human and the very beginning of what it might mean to be animal, does it do so in a way that sees that change as a kind of ascent? rather than descent. In other words, might we say becoming animal means being cured of being human, that there is something problematic about being human. Cue perhaps the Christian doctrine of original sin, the idea that the human is fallen and fallen in a way or to an extent that the animal is not. Well, that's it. Except to return to the question, was Gregor an animal that music could move him so? And to ask, is this a text that moves us so? And if so, do we too undergo transition, change, or even conversion?